Hey y'all, good evening. This is Ryan with TrendLizard.com. Uh, Peng, uh, thank you for sending me the email. Thanks for subscribing at TrendLizard.com. I think you're going to like what we do. We use Elliott Wave to analyze charts uh, to determine where things have been and where they are going so we can trade them and make money. So you sent me a, an email with three tickers you wanted me to analyze for you. We're going to take a look at Ethereum, uh, Junior Silver ETF, SILJ, and then Taiwan Semiconductor in that order. Uh, we're going to start here with Ethereum. There are three patterns that are apparent here. Uh, one, a very clean, uh, huge five-wave advance. Uh, followed by a three-wave ABC pullback. Don't love the way this one ended, but nevertheless, it's over. Uh, and it completed and clearly gave way to more trendy price action. So this is a, com a complete ABC pullback, followed by another trendy move. And we're going to take a closer look at this to determine where we are in this move to see if it's going to continue up or if it's entered into more of a corrective phase. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this price action off the 2020 low here. Uh, so here's what's happened off the 2020 low. We've got a nice first wave up, clear five wave move, a counter trend second wave pullback, another clear five wave up, and then off of the 2021 high, entered into a corrective fourth wave pullback. Uh, we expect this to complete and to give way to another large five wave advance that's going to head to new 2021 highs. That's the expectation. So uh, the question we have to ask is, did this fourth wave pullback complete? Uh, and give way to the resumption of the uptrend, or are we still in this larger fourth wave pullback? Let's go ahead and zoom in. Now, if the fourth wave completed at May's low, uh, basically what's happened is we've seen a first wave up, followed by a very time-consuming, choppy second wave pullback. This move has gone about as low as it can while maintaining the possibility that the fourth wave ended. If it heads any lower, we're going to have to conclude that wave four has not yet completed and that it's going to head lower before that fifth wave up begins to the upside. So if this move ended, if this fourth wave pullback did end, it needs to basically find support right where it's at right here. Uh, if it fails to do so, we have to conclude that wave four is still going to continue. So uh, here's what it would look like if wave four can, is going to continue doesn't necessarily mean it's going to head directly lower, but we would have to expect it to ultimately move below May's low before it completes. So any more weakness on this guy, anything that moves much below the low that was recorded this week, and again, we'd have to conclude that May's pullback is not yet over and lower levels will be sought out. Uh, if we take a closer look at that action that's happened off of May's low, again, if it is the start of a trendy move, it's a slow uh, slow start for sure, a five wave move to the upside, and then a very time consuming second wave pullback. However, if it does find support here and is able to move back above 2475, that's going to be the first bullish clue uh, that upside potential is there and that this guy is ready to head higher. That can be seen as a buying opportunity, um, but more or less, we're basically going to have to see how this plays out on Ethereum. Again, if it moves much lower than it has already, the only conclusion is that the pullback off of May's high is not yet over. You'd have to wait for a move below that low and then look for trendy strength to the upside then. That would be your buying opportunity. But again, overall, uh, we're looking for this fourth wave to complete and give way to a fifth wave advance. That will be a great trading opportunity. So there's Ethereum. Let's move on now to SILJ. Uh, this is the Pure Funds Junior Silver ETF. This guy was incepted back in late 2012. It's given us big swings. Overall, it's headed dead sideways for several years. It gave us a large ABC pullback to the downside. Followed that with a very sharp up move in 2016. This does look like a trendy move. Got another multi-year three-wave pullback to the downside. And then in 2020, we're getting more constructive price action to the upside. This does have potential. I don't think it's ready to go yet, but let's go ahead and zoom in and look at this action off of the 2020 low. So that up leg off the 2020 low does in fact look like a trendy five wave move to the upside. Since it's it recorded a high, it looks like in early August, it's headed side, sideways for nearly a year, and it doesn't look like this sideways move is over yet. It looks like we completed an A wave. All of this is one large choppy B wave. Price is breaking down now, could be a C wave down. Uh, whatever the case may be, if it continues lower in any way, it's going to confirm that this counter trend move is not yet over. At that point, we'd have to expect to move back to the previous lows that have been recorded uh, for this choppy move uh, and, or even a move into the yellow support area. Something sharp to the downside, an ending pattern, a C wave down. Once we get that down leg, then you can start looking at trendy strength from there as a buying opportunity. 
Uh, it does look good on the, on this time frame. It does look tradable since we're getting trendy five wave movement to the upside and counter trend price action to the downside. It just doesn't look like it's ready to go yet. I'd rather see that pullback, ideally test the yellow area, and then head up from there. And that at that point, we would be buying, looking for the formation of another trendy five wave move to the upside from there. So that is Sil J. Let's go ahead now and move to the last ticker. This is TSM, Taiwan Semiconductor. Uh, had a little bit of up and down action uh, near its inception in the late 90s and early 2000s. After it recorded a low in early, or excuse me, late 2002, gave us a leading diagonal first wave, a large second wave pullback, and ever since then, ever since 2008, it's been in a very large, trendy third wave advance that is not yet complete to the upside. So overall, we've got to be bullish on TSM. Doesn't look like it's ready to head higher directly from here, but we'll get into that as we go. Uh, now let's go ahead and zoom in on this fifth wave here. So this is going to be the fifth wave of the blue third wave. And once that completes, we're going to be on guard for a much larger pullback. But let's see what's going on with this five wave move that's forming off of the 2019 low. So this is that action here. Here's that 2019 low. Gave us a nice five wave up for wave one, a large ABC pullback for wave two, and then another five wave advance for wave three. And then off the 2021 high, it's been in a large fourth wave pullback. Doesn't look complete to me. We'll take a look at a couple different ways to label this. Uh, but this looks like a move that is not yet complete. What we'd be looking for is another move down that sets a new low. Again, an ending pattern to this fourth wave pullback before price turns up to the upside again. So let's go ahead and look at a couple different ways to label this 2021 action. Uh, this is my preferred way to label it. Looks like an A wave down, a B wave playing out here, and then a C wave down, which may have begun this week. Hard to tell yet, still too early, but a move below 112.50 at any point confirms that a larger pullback is going to play out on TSM. Now, there is a different way to label this where we could call the fourth wave complete. This doesn't look right to me. The C wave down is too small. It looks like a three wave move. This just doesn't look like the end, but if for some reason TSM is able to remain strong, stay above 112.50 and turn higher than uh, there's a chance that it could continue directly higher. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think a move below 112.5 is coming, and that'll confirm that a larger fourth wave is playing out. We would then be looking for a move into the yellow area. If we step out here, a move into this yellow area before it completes, and then again, looking to buy into strength that happens after we get that uh, ending pattern to the downside. So, Peng, I hope that's helpful for you. Again, welcome to TrendLizard.com. Let me know if you have any questions about this video or anything else as we go. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll talk to you again very soon. Take care.